Ivan, do you want to kick off? Yeah, I mean, I think that the first thing you have to do is you have to focus on delivery. I mean, if you say I bring people around the same tables, the same people who are battling from the same empire's perspective, the acute NHS battling with primary care, not joining up with social care, not understanding that housing and transport and clean air are absolutely the heart of improving uh, public health. And I'm afraid we're going to repeat all the same old mistakes. So you, when we talk about leadership, you need political leadership uh, to insist that that happens. But can I say something else? Strategy and vision is great. I was there for the white papers. I produced some of them. If you don't care about delivery, you're wasting your time. This is all rhetoric, because the same professionals, to some extent, will be fighting the same uh, battles. So you, you have to have an entirely different approach. You have to integrate to shift to prevention and early intervention. That's what we need to do. But I also think that unless we get a fairer deal in terms of resources, we are going to be perpetually dealing with crisis and we're going to be talking to people about dealing with prevention. When in reality, we're going to be dealing with failure because we haven't got sufficient resources to invest in prevention. Tony. Yeah, I'm going to start talking to you. I mean, look, look, the resource issue is, is, is a real one. Um, I mean, look, as it happens, resources and devolution um, operate in two different places. We, we're not worse resource better than the rest of the health service. And that's why we've got to be part of the challenge this government across our national health service. If we're sending people into our national health service out of Greater Manchester, then I want them to know they're getting the same quality of treatments in, in, uh, in Adam Brooks or, or in, in the London hospitals as, as anybody else will get. That's got to be right and proper. The challenge of funding is, is a national one and we've got to to see it in those terms as well. But in terms of the tra transfer of the, of the structures, yeah, look, what we've got is a very different architecture around what's available now. And come back to something I said in my opening remarks, if we see health as being simply the delivery of the existing health infrastructure, Ivan actually is right on that, we achieve no proper change. We've got to look at things like housing, We've got to look at things like uh, how we use transport, how we use things like public transport, open up cycling, how we begin to, to see issues, how we clean up our, our air quality, and many, many more. There is a challenge. Actually, one of the things we know with people living in poverty are more likely to be fuel poor. That makes a difference to their health. Challenging in those areas has got to be part of the big health picture. It's not enough, frankly, to just, just see health as a health system. It's got to go way, way beyond that. It's about positive health. Yes, of course, you're right. We know that early treatments actually is massively cheaper. I'll give you an example. You know, something I did in, as the Police and Crime Commissioner, a couple of things. One, we know that locking up people with mental health problems in our, our, our prison cells actually ends up in tragedy. People kill themselves. And people in any case are massively damaged. We don't, in Greater Manchester now, lock people up in those cells. What we do do, we get them into an early transmission into the mental health services. It's cheaper. It means it's more likely to be effective in terms of the health of that person with, in, in health crisis. It's better for everybody. It's also about they get the police back on the streets being police officers. Um, some very, very obvious things. Children with mental health, I've got to say to two former health ministers, you know, mental health in this city in particular, I say, uh, as a mem member of Parliament for the, the centre of this city for many years, it was a disgrace for all the years I was in Parliament, for all the years I was there. It was, a, it was a shame, a matter of shame. We know inner cities have the biggest mental health problems. We know that, and yet we have some of the most appalling care delivered, in, in, particularly in this city, but in the city region as well. Um, actually, if you want to begin to address um, and get up front, start with mental health. Begin to put the resources into mental health, because we know mental health has a direct impact on physical health. We know that. It's statistically easily proven. Um, get ahead of the game. Look at children's mental health. So a child picked up at the age of five doesn't become the 15-year-old who commits suicide. The child picked up at the age of five doesn't become the adult with chronic mental and physical health problems that would be like the whole of their life. So yeah, putting money up front is just common sense. We do have to have the space, though, and I agree with what to both these two have said, to get up front. And there is a resource in question. We've got to continue on that. The, Mr Osborne's government, or Mr Gove, if it is, when he's Chancellor, is not going to be helpful specifically to Greater Manchester. This is a Labour family issue, and with that, it's a Labour family. Andy? Well, I'll take your question very directly, but back to what you said. How do you make change happen in the right way and carry people with you? And I would point to two things, <coughs> two uh, very 
clear and simple things. Number one, you have to set out a vision that people can believe in. People who work in the system or whatever level, that they can kind of feel that that speaks for them and their values. And this is where we went wrong as a government. I was in the Department of Health with Ivan at the time, where I, I could see how the Labour government, as was, was just completely losing people. And I went off, the First Minister, to do it on a back-to-the-floor exercise across the NHS, to the great dismay of Patricia Hewitt. But I went out and did it, and I produced a report to say where everything, everything was going, uh, was going uh, wrong. And Ivan, to his great credit, gave me, gave me support on that, because we'd lost our way. We'd lost our way. We'd lost the people in the service and in the system. So that's what I'm saying. Come in from day one and spell out clearly what you are trying to do. That's my cabinet experience tells me that. Show people in simple terms what you are trying to achieve so that they can then subscribe to that. Not jargon, not a big policy paper, a simple vision. And mine is a national health and care service that isn't in a, in a silo, actually, Tony. It starts in people's homes and is person-centred, not patient-centred. So it supports people there and has, crucially, social care, good quality social care at that level. That is what I want to achieve, and I can say more about it. But the second point is, how do you then get there without it all being fingers crossed and hope and encouraging? It's the money. It's the money, isn't it? That, that is how. You've got to get the money then flowing behind that model of care. So how do I do that? I developed an idea for what's called a year of care budget or a year of care tariff if you want to use the, the, the current language and that is a single payment not for every member of the population but for those individuals identified as vulnerable older people requiring social care children with complex needs or, or adults with learning disabilities severe complex needs and the point is the system then gets paid to look after all of their needs physical mental social for an entire year and immediately if you think about it you transform the incentives in the system. The incentive becomes keep that person well and in the place they want to be, not in the most expensive part of the system. But at the moment, hospitals are paid by everybody who comes through the door. So they're stuck in that funding model. You've got to break that. And I'm already talking to leaders here in Greater Manchester. We, we believe, from the discussions I've had, that we can introduce a Greater Manchester Year of Care system in 2018, April 2018 and I've worked that deadline. And yeah, there is good work going on in Greater Manchester. They took my vision as Shadow Health Secretary and started implementing it, great. But I'm told that 50% at best of what I propose is being done. Well, we need the whole thing. The more you integrate, the more you save. The more prevention you unlock. So that is my clear answer to your question. That vision people can believe in, and then a system of funding that supports it.